All right, here's our tutorial on the iSIM reverse password synchronization installation supplemental guide. We'll start off with our first step and the iSIM version information just to show you what we're using. Log in to the identity manager as a privileged user. Um, as a privileged user, go ahead and go to the main screen, which defaults, and click About. It will then show you the iTIM server version, fix pack, and level that we're on. Here we're on fix pack three. Um, next, we will go over to the actual server and we're going to install the reverse password sync software. This is the 6.0 version 14. Uh, double click the installer and the install anywhere screens will present. Once the installer runs, we'll follow these steps. We're going to default OK to English. We will then select Next. And we will take the default install location. At this point, we're going to use a certificate file. This is the iSIM server certificate. So we'll open up the Mozilla browser. Very important step here. You're going to gather this from the iTIM server. So you have to point to the iSIM URL on the SSL port. So note the URL HTTPS colon whack whack server DNS name or IP address. Here is a blown up screenshot of that so you can see it. Must be the SSL port. Once you're in, collect the certificate by selecting the lock in the browser, select more information, and then at this point you're going to want to click view certificate. At that point you're going to click on details, and after the details you'll select the certificate hierarchy. Select the root, not the chain. Very important. Here's an exploded view. You can see that. That is the root. The next one would be the change. Install will fail on the change. Select export. We're going to save it to the desktop on this machine. Doesn't matter which machine it is. Uh, we're going to give it the name of the file. In this case, we're going to call it the RPS underscore demo underscore item underscore CA. Note the format is a dir format and we'll say save. We now have a new file on the desktop that reflects this file. Go ahead and click close and close this and close your browser. Back to the installation screen, we're going to choose the desktop. This is where we exported it and we're going to select that file. Here it is and select open. At this point the installer will then install the certificate for us into the service account for the trust store and we'll go forward and now we're going to go to the details of the reverse password synchronization details. So here's the host name. It's the same host name that you collected the cert from. It's the iSIM server. The SSL port default is 9443. Do not select the user certificate section. Item principal is the item manager. It could be any user with the sysadmin right and the password. There's no real validation other than the two fields were, exist, so make sure it's right. Um, here we're going to select add for the rest of the configuration, the base point. The base point is the Active Directory domain that we're managing. So click on the MMC, open up the users and computers, and you'll see the name of the domain, fbvm.com. So it's dc equals fbvm, comma, dc equals com. Next, we're going to select the service target DN. It's a little tricky. The information comes from the item server. So it starts off with ER service name equals. We're going to open up a share drive to the ISIM server. Doesn't matter how you get the data, let's just get the information. This info is going to come out of the enroll.properties file. So we'll get there under the data folder. You see the path up at the top. We're going to look at our enroll.properties file. Use a text editor to open it. We want to go down to the tenant information in this file. We're going to copy that to the clipboard. We'll put it in Notepad, make it a little easier to read. And we just want the default tenant information. This is case sensitive too, so make that important note when you're configuring. Okay. So in here, we'll pull back up the screen that shows the configuration of the password sync module. Let me close out a couple of these. Here we go. So the uh, name of the service name, go to your item server, click on your manage services, select the Active Directory profile and search. We'll have one. Note the name, w2008 underscore ad underscore fern. Note it's uppercase. We'll copy that value, go back to here. After ER service name, we'll add that, comma, 
and here is the info that comes now from the enroll.property file. Our O value is for our value in our enroll.properties for the organization. The organization in this case is Fern space capital V capital M comma and then we're going to go to our organizational unit which is our lowercase OU value and you can see here which is our OU equals Fern VM and with our suffix of course which you can see there for the LDAP server root DC equals com. Okay next step we're going to select OK. Now that we validated the information in this field for our service name and we're going to say OK. We enable password synchronization and enable the logging. Our installation now is complete. We'll close all windows. We have to reboot the domain controller here as the reverse password sync module is now installed and ready to be used. So we'll go through a quick reboot and then once we come back up we'll be able to test it and see the change that's being sent over to the SIM server um, and then how that validates inside. Control delete to get back into the machine. Once the machine is open, we're going to go over and click here on the uh, file system. We'll validate the installation. These are the post steps to the install. Uh, we're going to C drive, Tivoli, password sync. We're going to look at the log file since we restarted this and it listens the, um, to all the password change requests that are happening on the server. A new session will be identified and note the version number. Okay. We're going to actually go through an example here of a password change. So what we're going to do is we're going to send it from the item server. We're going to create a new user, submit a request, and we'll show you the request as it happens through Tim. I have a role set up that automatically provisions an Active Directory and item user through a single provisioning action. So every new user that's created will be given an item account and an Active Directory account. So here we have Jenna Jones as our user and Jay Jones is the ID and once we supply the information that's required then the user will be added into the two repositories. Now we hit continue and we're going to Copy. We're going to let the system give us a password here, and what we're going to do is first show you that this user doesn't exist inside of Active Directory. So we'll refresh that, um, and we're going to look in here and note the user is not there. Okay. Now we'll go into Tim and we'll commit the request. It gave us a password, 39NB, kind of cryptic. We're going to copy that to the clipboard. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go back in here and now refresh my Active Directory environment. And you'll see the new user is now in the list of users. And there's our user. Okay. So now this user information is the only bare minimum that we provided in the TIM request. Our provisioning policy had these minimum details and that's why we see it here. But now when we go back into the ISM server and we're going to look at this user inside of TIM, we're going to try to log in right away with the user credentials that we copy and pasted from the UI. So here we go, we paste it, select login. The user is able to log in, this is the first time, so I have challenge response done so they can help themselves later for forgotten passwords. So we answer the simple questions and now they're gained access to the ISIM environment. Okay, the user can now log in. Note the user Jay Jones, my work, this is the information they're entitled to through Tim. Looks different than the IT manager because they have different privileges. Nonetheless, here we go back into the um, ISIM environment. We're going to go back and take a look at the user um, password that we want to set now from AD. So we set it to AAA, triple four, IBM. We're going to copy this in the clipboard and we're going to go to the MMC and we're going to do a password change on AD. I'm going to reset the password. Control V, Control V. Do not require the user to change password on the next login. Set it. Now, what this did was it took the AD password, sent it to item. Let's look at this. The user now, Jay Jones, 
will be seen here as the view request from ISIM. Remember, AD sent the password to Tim. Tim will now synchronize all of the user's passwords. The password came from Active Directory. So when we look, since the user only has two accounts, ITIM and AD, the only password change request you see that comes is from the principal account, ITIM service. The AD one was already changed. No sense in changing it again. Tim knows it did it. So here we log in as that user, Jane Jones. We're going to control V for the password, triple A, triple four, IBM. User can now log in. Their password change was done through the AD password change. Didn't have to do it through Tim. Here we're going to go over and we're going to look at the password sync log and we're going to show you that change and how it was successfully sent. Here you can see there was a password detected for Jay Jones and it was sent. Tim shows the response as success. That concludes our demo. Okay, so this is the end of our demo here and we've uh, successfully shown the password change.